Hello and welcome back to my channel. I am Tiff with Journal with Tiff and today I'm going to go over all of the pens that if I had it to do again, I would not repurchase. I will admit I was a little bit on the fence about doing this video um, and the reason why is because sometimes I feel like personally I need to give things a second try um, and I like to really think why something did not work for me. I am I have the worst at trying something, not liking it, and I just get so turned off from it, and I literally have to force myself to go back and try it again. Um, when it comes to my fountain pens, um, there that is not a, they are not an exception. Um, and sometimes say I may have to tell myself, well, how about you just try a different ink, try it on different paper, um, or just keep trying it until you like it. But then the other side of me is like, but if you don't like it, you don't like it. Why are you trying to force yourself to like something? So I don't see myself as forcing myself to like it. I feel like I've given, given all of these pens uh, ample opportunity. Equal opportunity is a better way of saying it. I've tried them multiple times and each has just one or two things that just cause me not to reach for them. It doesn't mean that there's something wrong with them. It's just I just don't reach for them very often, and there's generally one or two reasons why. First is my Jinhao X850. I purchased this on Amazon. I got it in a medium nib. I love the way this pen looks. Um, I will admit that my experience with the Jinhaos, are, the nibs are not exactly consistent. Um, initially, when I first got it, I enjoyed the feel of it. Um, I enjoyed how it felt in my hand. It was a really good size and weight and length. Um, and I was, I was pretty impressed, uh, for a pen at this price point. And then I just little things like, as you can see, if you can look at the clip here, see how that's pulled up. The clip was pulled up and then the finials, it was almost just like the quality of it was just really, really poor. <clears throat> the finials started coming off. And I know that Gen House can become Franken pins uh, to a certain extent where you can exchange the finials, but the finials would not stay on. The uh, clip was constantly spinning, even if I were to tighten down the finial because it would come off. It wasn't holding on the clip and it would put out so much ink. Um, for this to be, is this a medium? Yeah, I think this is a medium. Um, and I am really getting away from purchasing pens with a medium nib unless I, it's a pen that I feel like um, I really want the pen and I can only get it in a medium nib and I can just change the nib out. Um, but generally speaking, I write fairly small and I really need thinner lines. And some medium nibs I can deal with, some I can't, and this is one that I just cannot. It was leaning towards a broad as I would write with it. And I really hate it because um, it was comfortable and I love the way it looks. To me, black and gold is so classy. So I'm kind of disappointed. This is one though, I will say that I may in the future try it again. But this particular one, it was just a dud for me. Um, it's such a classy looking pen. I want to love it, um, but it just wasn't working for me. So if I had to do it again, this particular one, I would not purchase. Next is a combination. My Cavecos. These are the only two Cavecos I have. I have it in Macchiato. This was one of my very first, and I'm sorry, there's a glare. Let me see if I can get rid of this glare. That's a little bit better. Okay, so my very one of my very first fountain pens was the Caveco, and I loved it. And this was in the Macchiato, and it's kind of like it's all you know, it's all that you're used to. So I was digging it, and it's not too bad, but I am really getting to the point of just really, really uh, liking the wider barreled pens and as you can see this is a very small barrel um, once it is posted the length was not a problem it's just the size my hand would start to cramp very easily 
and I purchased the uh, brass second hand and it, the exact same issue. I do like the weight of the brass just in general, but once it's capped, it's so back weighted. I just was not feeling that at all. If if it wasn't for the back weight of it, then this one possibly may not have been as bad, but still the size in general. So that's why I have both my Cavecos together. I want to love Cavecos. I think they are so cute, but I don't think I will be purchasing another. Next, I purchased this Pinator. I think I'm saying that appropriately. Uh, Avatar in white. And this just was not comfortable for me. This is my first and only pen I've ever had with the uh, metal grip section. And it just, I don't know, it was just a very weird, weird feeling. Um, the nib itself, it is, there's zero spring. It is hard as a rock. Um, my platinum nib is really stiff, but this just puts my platinum uh, nib stiffness to shame. And it is a pretty nib. It's really pretty. It's a really nice pen. I was going through a white phase, uh, meaning I just kept buying white uh, fountain pens, but I don't know. This one just didn't do it for me. The writing experience with it was okay, uh, but the, when I, I just stopped reaching for it. Um, that, as a matter of fact, I actually forgot I had it until I was going through um, a drawer, I found a pen bag and there it was. I had totally forgotten I had it. So if you can put a pen away and forget you have it, it's probably not one that you would ever purchase again because it's not sticking with you. There's nothing that's drawing you to this pen. At least that's how I feel about it. So yeah, would not buy this, per this particular pen again. Next is my Lamy Safari. Um, this is in white, and I realized that I don't think I am gonna be a Lamy girl, at least not in the Safari. Um, the grip section was just kind of weird for me. My fingers did fall in the right spots. Um, sorry about all the ink on my nails. Um, but number one, this is an extra fine. This put out so much ink. I'm like, okay, it just, I was not enjoying writing with it. Um, and it's weird because I like the satisfaction of putting the cap on my pens, be it a twist cap or a mag magnetic snap. Um, but the, putting this cap on is just no satisfaction in this for me at all. It just wasn't. And I know that probably sounds crazy, don't judge me, um, but I just get satisfaction out of the little things. And this one, it just did nothing for me. It just, it didn't. And I wanted to like it. I wanted to love it. I see other uh, safaris um, in different colors. I think there's a deep green one. Um, I can't remember the name of it. And I was like literally on the verge of purchasing it. And I kind of had to talk myself out of it. I'm like, if it's anything like this one, it may look good sitting in your pen case. Um, but if you're not going to reach for it, then why buy it? So yeah, probably would not purchase another Lamy Safari again. Next, my uh, Pilot Custom 74. This one kind of surprised, it surprises me even now. Um, I love my Pilot Custom um, 823. Gosh, that just it just left me. That's just really weird. Um, and I love the nib and the writing experience of those pens. Um, but I think maybe this particular nib is just too small. Um, this is in a fine. Um, it is a, the whole pen in general is a little bit smaller than the Custom 823. Um, and so this is not too, too small, but it's on the verge of being too small. And I just found myself not reaching for it. I was not happy with the nib. Um, it, I mean, there's a little bit of give to it, but not much, not as bad as the pen, pen uh, pen, but yeah, it was just something about this particular, sorry for the not focusing, um, about this particular model of pilot pens. So it's just one of those, just because you like a pen in one particular brand does not mean that you're gonna like 
all of them. And this particular model is just not my cup of tea, so would not purchase the Custom 74 again. The Ferris Wheel Press brush pen. I have talked about this pen before and I'm bringing it up again. I'm just so utterly disappointed um, that in myself, not in the pen because it's not the pen's fault that it's not the right size for me, um, but it's so gorgeous. If this pen could have a larger body, it wrote beautifully, but my hands would just cramp using it. And I, it just, I did not enjoy it. I do not enjoy it. And um, just, I just haven't taken the plunge to uh, post it for sale. But yeah, it's actually all of these um, can be rehomed. Um, but yeah, just the size of this alone, that is the only thing. And the main reason I get so disappointed is because of the beauty. I mean, look at this grip section. Let's see if I can get a better picture of it. Look at that grip section. Just the intricacy of it is just gorgeous. I cannot get over how beautiful this pen is. And I think that's why I haven't posted it yet, honestly, because it's just so, it's just that grip section is just so stunning and I love it. But I would not purchase another uh, brush pen from Ferris Wheel Press again. And lastly, the Jin Hao Century 100. This is gonna sound crazy because this is a kind of would not purchase again. This pen, I like the size of it. Um, it's it's honestly, it did not write bad depending on the ink, but I have no idea what possessed me to purchase this light pink color. This is not something that I like. I have never, ever, ever been into light, light pinks. Um, I've inked it, I've used it. Uh, for a month before, but it's something that I literally have to, I see it sitting there and I'm like, oh, I guess I'll use it. Um, it, it writes fine, unlike my other Jen Hao. Um, this one writes fine. I think I got this in, this is a fine nib. Um, so I kind of would not purchase again. And I think it's just the color. I would not purchase this color again. And when I look at it, sometimes I'm like, well, it's really not that bad. Well, why am I trying to convince myself? So it's kind of a half and half. I would purchase the pen again. I would not purchase in this color is I guess what I'm trying to say. But I dislike the color so much that it's kind of pushing me to say, just don't get the pen again. So that's one of the conversations I have to have with myself that if I found this model in a colorway that I enjoyed, I very well may purchase again. So kind of on the fence about this one. And those are all of my pens that if I lost, if they broke, if anything were to happen, I would not repurchase. I would not be upset about it. Um, I think we all kind of go through that where we find pens that it's like, well, I want to like it, but I just don't. But I just don't reach for these. Um, I have so many others. These can possibly be rehomed. And yeah, so hope you guys enjoyed the video. Feel free to leave a comment down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you guys later. Bye.